I just had Jason throw me. Jason just threw me the hat here because my bald head looks so bad with uh, with the light glaring off my head. Although I still need to shave. Man, Andrew and Keith already roasting me um, for being old and wise. Wise. Uh, why am I late? We were doing the lot. We did a podcast actually today. Um, and we didn't finish till like 2.40. So Earl is now, what's up, Karipa? So Earl's now working on site, and we're like trying to figure out this new schedule with being in the live. Jake, what's up? The master of the speed strength. And that's what we're going into. We're going to the key to building speed strength for athletes. Jake, how's my, how do my arms look? How do I look like this? Like, How's that look? so happy jake's in here um yeah i agree with you on that as well andrew i feel like we are i feel like we are a little under appreciated so going into the key to building speed strength and i think the you know if you watch the recent video the key to the key to one defining speed strength i think the easiest way to think about it is like if we would get rid of speed strength although I, I just think speed strength okay yes the two words combine it's okay you're gonna have speed and you're gonna have strength okay that makes sense but i think that it's easier if you go impulse is here and impulse is the amount of force in a designated period of time okay so if you have a short period of time a half of a second and you can apply a massive amount of force to me that's speed strength but that is technically based off of science-based terms impulse and, you know, even like the finish at the end of a clean or um, when you're planting and you're doing a plyometric like a jump or something like that's going to be a very high expression of impulse because that time frame is so, so precise. Uh, and that's why you actually see force in sprinting and in plyometrics and in jumps is off the charts. It's so freaking high relative to like even pulling a 800 pound deadlift. When you run or do a plyometric, you're going to be uh, dealing with more force. And I think that um, that's where I think like if we could just define speed strength of fo as force in time, I think that 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 looks uh, a little bit better. Jake just did say my arms look all right. So I'm, I'm excited for that. Maybe if I did like the one pose like this, uh, which one looks better? Maybe my right one. I got a little shadows there. Also, I just signed up for another marath marathon, so I might be getting a little small. Um, again, I guess we'll have to see. So I think that that first big aspect is just, look, you've got to define it as force designated in a time period. Um, how much force or how much of whatever you're dealing with, you know, more so speed strength to me is more so that realm than like just straight brute strength okay so that's like the first aspect then when i'm looking at um the the big factors of speed strength is saying what type of exercises improve speed strength i'm going to say all right this is where the the clarity needs to be made because a lot of people will say well okay if impulse is speed strength if it's force over a time frame right everybody sort of looks at it and they'll say, well, then we should just train this way. That's it. That's all we should do. There's no spectrum of training. There's no spectrum of development. And so if we could say that impulse is force over time, that's what speed strength is. What is going to help uh, with training, you know, force production? First, we can look at building an engine, building a very strong engine, using max strength, getting, you know, your back squat bigger, improving global neural drive, improving, uh, Rate, global rate of force development and, and you just keep looking at that spectrum over here right and then you go to the speed side and you're going okay plyometrics uh specific plyometrics dynamic movements technical coordination movements and then they start to like meld together and so the big aspect is looking at it and saying okay speed strength is really impulse which is really force produced in a designated period of time there needs to be some type of stabilizing um, energy or stabilizing production that happens. And the more stable an object becomes, uh, the more force they can produce and the more force that they can then use. Think I like to use this. Think about um, what's up, fried rice boy. Think about 
if we see a, a skier, like think about the giant slalom going down a hill, they look so stable in their trunk, right? But their legs are moving side to side, bringing their knees up and doing all, like all this crazy stuff. But the reason why they can do all the things uh, with their legs is because they're stealing with this stable trunk. So, you know, in that case, like there's a point in this individual who might go off of a jump and land ve at very, very high speeds from a very high position um, while they're skiing. And there would be a massive amount of impulse when they're grounding, um, but they would benefit from doing heavier back squats or front squats or anything like that. Same thing with a sprinter. They're going to we, we know that sprinters produce massive amounts of impulse, express massive amounts of impulse when they're sprinting. And we also know that back squatting, front squatting lead to better sprint times. The reason being, it creates a more stable organism. So if we have a more stable organism, um, I, I even like to think about it. Here's a, here's a wild one, right? Is, is a, a, a wild one would be if we, if we took a whip, Okay, so think about the stable part of the whip is right here. And you go like this and you flip the whip and it goes out and it comes back in, right? Really, the the hip is almost like the the stable portion that allows you to provide that 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 rapid uh uncoiling and recoiling, right? And so where I'm going with this is that if we're looking at exercises is is one, we have to make a stable organism, and that's going to be in an early part of your training. Then we start to get a little bit more dynamic, um, and we build in slowly. And then we start to continue with the stable organism and then build into more rapid movements as well. So then we start to do uh, daily undulating back and forth where we're going to do more. And then you start to build into even more contrast type style uh, work. You can start to build through that and we're still doing absolute strength movements because we know that creates stability and then we're doing dynamic movements at very 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 high speeds because we know that transfers well and so one of the interesting parts i've seen recently um is like there's this there's this point and i and i talk about um uh there's this point i'm just reading chris gilbert thank you for that there's this point of um and I'm also reading Andrew's comments there. Yeah, Lindsey Vaughn, Bodie Miller lifted rather heavily. Yeah. Um, so there's there's just like this, there's this point that we have to look at and identify with these with these thought processes, okay? Of currently in the strength and conditioning world, and we actually talked about this on the podcast, was there's there's this world, this realm of strength training is just GPP. That's all it is. It's just general prep. There's no specificity. And then there's this over here side of strength and conditioning. That's like, you've got to do the exact movement that mimics the, the technical exercise or technical competitive movement to a T at the same high speed at the same joint angles, blah, blah, blah. When in reality it's this and it's this and it's everything in between. And we've got to look at that even to the point of depending upon the period of someone uh in their career we have to build an engine for them then we have to teach them that rate of force development to improve their impulse expression to then lead to greater uh force over uh force application in a short period of time and it really just goes back and forth playing the game of creating stability creating dynamism create stability create dynamism create stability create dynamism back and forth back and forth back and forth until the athlete learns those skills learns those techniques over and over again so that they have higher speed strength so the exercises could be anywhere from a back squat a front squat a single leg squat to single leg bound stair jumps um depth drops depth drops into a bound um Skips for height, skips for distance, single leg jump rope, all these movements, okay? So how can someone program speed strength for athletes? I think this is where speed strength for athletes, to me, would be, okay, I'm looking at impulse. So impulse, we're going to be looking at um, does speed strength actually exist? You guys can vote on this YouTube poll. Vote on it uh, today, please, right now, immediately. Let us know what your thoughts are. So if we're looking at it, I think speed strength, I'm going to, I'm going to try and skew the, this poll speed strength exists, but impulse is a better description, mainly because the definition of impulse from a science based explanation 
is force and time. So going back to this, if we're looking at programming uh, speed strength for athletes, impulse for athletes, it always is going to come back to what is the athlete's competitive movement, uh, competitive skill, right? But then also we have to analyze where are they in their in their training. And we actually talked about this again. This is a really unique aspect where it's like, if I have somebody who's in high school and I don't do this, but I would, I would have no problem if I had the athlete commit to this. I would have zero issue saying to a high school football player, you're going to do this day one, you're going to snatch and you're going to back squat day two. We're going to do power snatch and we're going to bench day three. You're going to have a rest period day four. You're going to snatch and you're going to back squat day and day five. You're going to, power snatch and bench press again. And we're going to do that for three years. And they would get extremely strong and they would get extremely explosive. It'd be very, very effective. But what would happen is that there would become a point of diminishing returns. It wouldn't be worthwhile. Okay. So if we look at somebody's career, when we're trying to program, we have to identify the career point. We have to identify the sport that they're in. We have to identify the strength characteristics, the top three strength characteristics for that sport. Then we have to take the top three strength characteristics and then build out specificity off of those top three strength characteristics. Is it the you know, local endurance? Is it localized uh, muscular explosive muscle explosive muscle? Is it specific to joints? Um, is it specific size that we're looking for? Specific usage is always going to be there. Muscle usage is always going to be there. But joint speed, size, endurance, that's going to be the main things that we would we would analyze. Then we take that and we look at, okay, where are they at in their career? How can we build those things based on where they're at in their career and when they have to peak? And then we lay that out even further. But really, it's like keep it simple on the front end of a program. First two programs that are four weeks apiece, keep it simple. Back end of the program, you can start to get much more specific. So thinking that strength training is just GPP or strength training is just sports specificity. You know, Franz Bosch actually just posted something recently uh, criticizing like people who train like skiers, they should they should stop doing movements where they squat uh, ass to grass or something like that. It was something along those lines. And and the thing is, is it's like there's a point when skiers should do very very specific work and there's a point when skiers should do very general work and i think that also on the other side you'll see strength coaches say don't do cleans just do this because it's all about gpp and it's like dude everybody stop with the dogma it's all the it's the whole spectrum and there's a there's a spectrum of specificity that we have to identify as strength coaches and where is the athlete on that spectrum Coaches just want to throw out these blanket statements because they can't explain it further or they want to make it more complex uh, to confuse people. So I did want to throw that in there. Um, okay. Why is impulse a better way to define speed strength? I think for me personally, right, looking at that question, it makes me think about if we can define words um, with classically supported definitions okay and i think like yeah I, I would be interested to see i wonder if we can actually do this right now i might uh i might actually just throw this up on the the screen possibly so speed strength is the ability of the neuromuscular system to produce the this is interesting this is very interesting the greatest possible dude i gotta share this um i gotta see if Look, I did not, like, this is the interesting one. Speed strength is the ability of the neuromuscular system to produce the greatest possible impulse in the shortest possible time. Now, okay, it is divided by work. It is divide, defined in work divided by time. Okay, so here's my thing. Impulse is, is work and time, okay? Force times distance, and usually distance is represented by time, okay? So why are we actually going another layer? Why not just define this as impulse, which is what it is. Everybody can learn that word. It's simple. So, you know, if we're looking at it, I think that that's where I, I always get super confused about. It. So, okay. So that's like the, you know, I don't know if fandom or athletics.fandom.com. I don't know if that's like a, uh, you know, here's speed strength training from OPEX. Uh, that's like a CrossFit group. Um, 
Okay, so if I would just go and then search impulse, um, we would see impulse is the change in momentum of an object. It is the initial, uh, let's see here. Here we go. I don't know if you guys can see the, it's uh, forced to, yeah, it's, it's over on, I can't show you over here. Yeah, I can't, if, even if I change them. If you look on Wikipedia there, um, which we should see this formula. So here's where we're going to actually see the, the, the formula. And it's like, okay, we can, we can define, I think it's force divided by the force divided by time, force times time. Okay, this is getting more into like the in-depth physics. I just was hoping that we would see... Uh, Oh, impulse to get pizza, a sudden desire. A sudden desire, actually, that's a great one. A sudden desire. A sudden desire to move really, really fast, okay? Um, act of applying force. Suddenly, the impulse knocked him over. I mean, that's actually, like, cool when we're looking at the impulse knocked him over. These are the the impulses from the cortex of the hypothalamus. Anyway, uh, I, I would like to share, Lance Brooks has a has a whole thing on like actual definitions of uh of these these this terminology and what it means um and so i think that i would recommend checking that out but i think we should be going uh specifically with a true uh, a true meaning of the of the word and 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 roll that way instead of like layering it and trying to dumb it down it makes no sense to dumb it down so um okay now we're going to get into some of these uh, these reactions. And Phil DeRue has a great video here on on strength speed versus speed strength. I actually feel like this is from a couple of years ago, um, so I'm interested to see what I think about this. I'm, let's check this out quick. Now, speed strength, you're going to be working roughly around 50 to 60 percent of your one rep max, and you're going to be improving upon your high rate of force development. It's going to be a bar speed of about 1.0 to 1.3 meters per second. So make sure that you have that there. And what you're basically going to be doing is moving submaximal loads as fast as possible. The athletes that are going to need to improve upon this are going to be Olympic lifters, running backs, linebackers, hammer throws, shot put, and also boxing and MMA can also utilize this to improve on their performance. Right. So basically what we want to do is we want to create as much force as possible as fast as possible right? as much force as possible as fast as possible i think that's a very speed strength as much force as possible as fast as possible somebody just commented like so impulse day inside our app peak strength we have an entire day devoted to impulse right you guys know this you've seen it you you you're inside the app you got that week free and then you convert it and you're using this, you're using peak strength because you want to become a freak and you understand that in there is an impulse training session. So my big thing here is the question was, okay, on impulse day, are we training speed or explosiveness? And my challenge would be define speed and define explosiveness. Okay. If I think somebody's fast, like they can run fast, I think they're explosive. I'm thinking they they're twitchy. They've got a whole nother gear. They're they're like just super 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 springy. And I I think about uh being light on the feet, being able to react quickly. Um being explosive, okay? To me is in and maybe I should try and pull this up. I'll see if I can bring this up. Um uh, I'll, I'll try and demonstrate this real quickly, but being explosive is when you see offensive defensive linemen making contact in that short period of time, that's explosive. And those guys have good speed. They have the speed uh, to carry over. So in my opinion, in most cases, you're going to say explosiveness uh, and non-explosiveness would be, or explosiveness and speed would be the same. So if I'm showing here, let me see if I can change the, Okay, if I pull this back, well, actually, okay, so what I wanted to show you was I had been, this was two years ago, I had been on the field uh, of Penn State versus Michigan, and I was trying to record during the Penn State versus, versus Michigan game. I'm on the field. I'm watching the angles. I'm watching 
contact. I'm recording everything because I want to do some research on what impulse is. I wanted to clarify in my mind speed strength, okay? And that's partially what I'm trying to do for you. And so it's like looking at that first step, looking at explosiveness, having speed is going to be impulse based, okay? If you're impulse training, you will be developing explosiveness, you will be developing speed, okay? You will be developing rate of force development, you will be developing power output, okay? All under that impulse umbrella. So we've got to recognize that it's it's taking care of quite a bit. Uh, now we're going to get into this. The Lynch series with weight. Oh, this just came out. On YouTube or anywhere Three weeks ago. Did you guys watch this? Hopefully everybody watch this. I love this movement. You can see as you work through this, you get smoother. You get Notice smoother. you land, you drop, you get out of the cut. Everything's happening within like a half a second. The first time they do this, they're going to look like trash. By the 30th time that they're doing this, they're going to look freaking smooth. And that's how you transfer that speed strength that you're developing in the weight room out onto the field. So here, boom, boom, boom. 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 I do five sets of jumps, four reps on the left side, four reps on so the right plant, side. So plant, cross, drop, more energy, good. It's not speed strength. You get smoother. You get I want to see if smoother. I can time this. Think about an athlete executing that four for four. They're showing up four days a week for four years. The first time they do this, they're going to look like trash. By the 30th time that they're doing this, they're going to look freaking smooth. And that's how you transfer that speed strength that you're developing in the weight room out onto the field. So here, boom, boom, boom. I do five sets of jumps. Okay. Four reps. I just, I think that that's like a really, really valuable point is just getting back into impulses over top. So if we're doing impulse based training, right inside of peak strength, we're trying to take care of speed. We're trying to take care of explosiveness. We're trying to take care of rate of force development. We're trying to take care of power output. It's all going to happen on that day. Now on a power day, that's going to be more focused on absolute strength and power output. That leg power day is going to create the stable organism that we're looking for. And I think that that's just like, let me know if that helps with, with that clarity. I'm hoping that um, to a point that that does, I'm going to end up what I'm trying to do here. Um, I'm going to set this up because I want to answer some of your guys' questions. Uh, and before we get into that, if we can just understand and think through, like if you guys want to dive deeper in this, last week we had this big discussion on um, endurance-based training in, the, in our private live. And if you guys want to have a deeper uh, discussion on our private live, consider becoming a channel member. And if you're on a desktop, um, well, we meet every single Friday where I give you direct tips on improving your training. It's a really positive group. Everybody's hanging out. Everybody's having fun. Dude, last week's was freaking phenomenal. Um, and also, one of those big aspects, oh, on this week, the Ronin, Ronin, Ronin Peak just did a video on basketball training this week. Check the peaks. Okay. Ooh. Oh, okay. Okay. Um Andrew, one thing with impulse training or speed training, gosh, I'm getting so off track. I'm trying to give, uh, I'm trying to discuss our, uh, our Friday, our Friday hangouts. But Andrew, I would say sprint based work I would have on a Monday. Um, and I would probably do impulse work probably the day after speed work. I actually had this big conversation with Nicholas last Friday, um, but I think for, for going into some deeper discussions, if you guys like this talk, you want to become a channel member, you know, it's 10 bucks a month. You get a full one hour lecture each week where we talk, uh, I, I talk through, I break down some, uh, some studies like this one and we go in depth, super in depth on how you guys can apply it, uh, what that means for your training. Uh, it's 10 bucks a month and all you guys have to do, you can, you can click on the join button and if, if you're on the desktop. Um, and that's one of the things that you can do to join our Friday private lives. Okay, now I wanted to go into this video or this specific topic here, and then I wanna come back and answer a lot of your guys' questions because uh, you guys are just killing it with putting questions into the into the chat box. Um, Leighton is complaining that the video, the audio on the video, oh, oh, sorry, okay, on the actual video, sorry about that. Okay, so, one of the big interesting points here, okay, in 
a lot of uh of specific training is um we don't understand speed work we don't understand impulse no one actually even talks about impulse training uh and we don't even understand like how to apply it so due to drawbacks okay due to drawbacks of the percentage based approach so there's some drawbacks to percentage based training right um, some days people feel really good. Some days people feel really bad. They don't think that they can actually hit the percentages. They, they, they're not motivated, whatever it might be. There are some drawbacks to percentage based training. Um, I think range percentage based training is effective, but I don't think percentage based training alone is the best. Now due to v- drawbacks of percentage based training, velocity based training was proposed as a method to be better and more accurately prescribe training loads to increase general and specific performance. Okay. So in this paper, they're, they're saying, Hey, let's use velocity based training, uh, to propose a method to make it more accurate, to prescribe more accurate training loads. So the purpose of this study was to perform a systematic review of the studies that show effects of velocity based training, uh, on stre- strength and power performance in elite athletes. So if we use velocity based training, does that improve, uh, power and strength? Okay. So electronic searches for databases that they use, blah, blah, blah. We'll get through the methods. Seven studies were found, which researched the effects of velocity based training on athletes after a given training period. Okay. The analyzed studies suggested applying velocity losses of 10 to 20%. Okay. So if a, a velocity is lost at 10 to 20%, this can help induce neuromuscular adaptations and reduce neuromuscular fatigue using velocity zones as part of a separate or combined training program can elicit adaptations in body comp and performance parameters. Moreover, Velocity zones can be programmed using a periodized or non-periodized fixed velocity zones protocol. Lastly, obtaining instantaneous feedback right here during training is a more effective tool for increasing performance in sport-specific parameters and should be used by sport practitioners. So the big factor here, it's basically saying like, if we can use something like um, uh, velocity-based training and we've got a Tendo unit or something, and this is the one thing I want to go into um, if we can, if we can drop off here, I want to just think through, like, if you don't have access to velocity based training, I think like one of the downfalls of VBT is coaches that use it very rarely will specify on that day. Like this is the goal of this day of training. Okay. This is the goal. So we need zones here. So we're going HAF heavy keep the zone, keep the speed at 0.3 per meters, meters per second. Okay. We want to go that heavy or we're going fast. We're going to do muscle snatches over two meters per second, two and a half meters per second. We're doing behind the neck jerks, two meters, 2.2 meters per second. Okay. So we can differentiate and identify those specific days. We try to do this specifically, um, with peak strength so that we, we can sort of one, get in your pocket and be like, all right, guys, like, how can we set this up so that you're able to not have to get a VBT? And at the same time, if we undulate leg day, that's a leg power day. So we're going to focus on more load, more weight. Then we go to upper body power day. Well, then day three, now we're getting into athlete day. So it's going to be speed impulse focus. Day four impulse focus, a little bit lighter intensity. And we're focusing on the intent to move things as fast as possible. Remember that Phil DeRue quote. Okay. The whole purpose here on impulse is to move a weight, move a load as fast as possible in the shortest time frame as possible. Okay. So that's going to be that impulse day training. And that's sort of a, a very unique method that we use uh, to base your training without having to invest in like that, the velocity based training tools. And it still is going to be effective. You're still going to see gains. You're still going to blow up. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. I wanted to go into that. I've also just been doing a lot of, of research around, um, eccentric speed. I've been doing a lot of research around, uh, what we're looking at from, from athletes who run fast, who, who produce a massive amount of power, a massive amount of force, uh, and, and where we can go with our training in that realm. Because I think that, 
you know, actually somebody just commented, Zach just commented, what's, what's strength training for sumo wrestling? It's going to be how freaking strong and how stable are you? But then also how much force can I produce in this time frame before we make contact? You have to produce, if you want to be the best sumo wrestler in the world, you have to produce more force, you know, relative, if body weights are equal, I need to produce more force faster than the opponent. If the opponent is producing the exact same amount of force of force as me, but I can do it quicker, I win. That's the whole point of day four inside peak strength is to do that. That's the whole point of the athlete day is to learn how to master impulse expression, learn how to master the techniques of being twitchy. We know that concurrent dynamic training that you're going to get from that upper body power, that leg power to getting extremely strong is beneficial. General prep is beneficial. Specific patterns, specific speeds is beneficial. That's why we, we set it up that way. Um, and if we're looking at something for like, uh, protecting the groin or whatever now we're going to get into some of these questions inside the inside the chat um if you guys are looking at like okay zach just said i you know my my groin and my hips are bothering me first i think there's a couple key things that we could start with every single session of your training start off with a seated pigeon pose get into a seated hip 90 90 then go into a seated hip 90 90 with an extension then going go into a rolling hip 90 90 into an extension do that every single day when you're warming up okay that's going to help with your hips then okay here now we're going to get into the strength portion of this this period is like okay now we can start doing sliding caustic squats sliding banded caustic squats we can do Cossack squats in place. Make sure that you're getting that full range of motion. You can do like a side lying Cossack squat with a band attached to uh, a pull up bar, which I wanted to actually start to play around with a little bit more. Oh, Sean, what's up? Boom. How are you doing? Dane, motivation after COVID. Feel like I'm in a fog. Less than five months until my next tournament. My lack of ability to motivate, uh, re motivate, and push. Appreciate the thoughts. I had COVID a week ago. Dude, I've, I've, I've got a lot of people in the gym. My, I didn't get it. Um, my wife's, my wife's brother got it when we were down in, uh, Charlotte. Um, and, uh, we were talking about, uh, or he, he ended up getting COVID and it was like the same thing. You just get knocked on your ass for like 10 to 12, 10 to 12 weeks or 10 to 12 days. Sorry. 10 to 12 days. I would say this, Sean, I think first try to get in the sauna. If I don't know if you've gotten into the sauna, I think if you can get in the sauna four days, in a row um after you after you have covid i think that that's going to help with the recovery i think high dose vitamin c consult your doctor but high dose vitamin c uh, can also help with that i think just getting as much sleep as possible that's going to help as well and just go you know you could go two weeks where you keep the percentages or something or, or you're just like you know what let's just stick around at um Let's stick around at like 70 to 80% load for like two weeks. And then all of a sudden, I feel like there's going to be a day where you start to feel recovered and you start to feel that that big like, oh, all right, I can I can get after it again. Because I think that that's what sort of happens when you get sick as well is like you just get knocked down and you're like flat, 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 flat. And your body takes time to, to recover. Your body takes time to like establish, reestablish that homeostasis. And then all of a sudden it just boom back up. But to to improve that, I think, you know, throw in some bone broth, some, throw in some glycine. Um, you know, I know Rhonda Patrick always talks about if you have sauna, you know, within like two hours of sleep, you're going to have a deeper wave, uh, more deep wave sleep. So like your sleep spindles will will probably be a little bit more active, which can help with your recovery as well. Uh, so let me know. I hope that that helps. But I would go through like a regular routine of like sauna, high dose vitamin C, um, mobility, prayer, meditation, um, make sure you add about a half hour to an hour of sleep. I think those are some key factors. Yeah. Andrew's saying he had that, um, yeah, heart rate helped a lot. Light jumps. Uh, when it comes to VBT, are there certain velocities that you'd want to match with percentage? Like I should be able to bench 65% of my one rep max. So if you're benching, let's say, um, let's say we're using, like a muscle snatch okay muscle snatch typically even at a max muscle snatch you're going to be moving around around like 2.2 meters per second now if we're looking at like let's say 70 percent of my bench for a double 
you know, specifying we're not doing it close to failure, you should be close to two meters per second. I'd say probably possibly even faster. Um, so I think that that's you, you, we've just got to dial that in. We actually have a, an internal percentage chart that we built out with all the velocity work that we did. Um, and then we assigned rep ranges to that and then, and then sort of goals to that as well. So like, that's something that we use internally. Um, good moderation work there. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. That was very appreciated. So I think it just depends on, on the individual as well. Um, I have a friend who lost a hundred pounds in eight months by turning his treadmill into a desk and walking 60,000 steps a day. 60,000. Are you sure? He claims to have strong legs and big cardio. Is he full of it? I don't know if I believe 60,000 steps a day. Dude, 30,000 steps a day is like 16 miles. Uh, actually, yeah, it's around like 16, 16 miles. 16, 15, yeah. Dude, that's a lot. That I, I think that's really high. Even if I think he could lose 100 pounds doing like 30 to 40,000 steps. I would say he's got great cardio. I don't. I would argue the the strength of his legs is not going to be dependent about, uh, around how much he walks. His ankles would be. Um, Ronan's asking, what's the best exercises for each day as a basketball player? Um, I think the the best day... Um, man, Ciari is even saying that he saw the screenshots. I, 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 I think the best exercises for a basketball player... Um, Something simple like single leg, dumbbell single leg squats, um, side band walks. Dude, you know, we just did the, the video with Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls, even just doing like a two box power snatch. Easy movements that help you be stable in an overhead position. Something that's very easy. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get you a little bit fatigued in your legs, um, but like the hips, the knees, um, the ankles, they all have to be very stable for basketball players. And so even something like sled pull backwards, fantastic movement for basketball players. Um, at what meters should I do? But, but kicks meanwhile, sprinting at what meters should I do? butt kicks do f six sets of 20 meter butt kicks. That'd be fine. Um, three miles per hour for eight hours. That's a lot. So that'd be, that'd be crazy. CR. You know, I'm not saying, yeah, you might be right. You guys should go vote on what's the favorite, the best speed strength exercise that you like. How many days should I be going to the field in the offseason for football? I'm lifting six days a week. I'd say two to three. Um, I would definitely say two to three. Um, geez, you guys are just commenting in there. It's just crazy. Uh, I would say two to three days a week uh, going to the field, and I think you would be, you would absolutely, you would, you'd feel good. Um, trying to get over here and, and, and check out here. Does the start, does the starting point matter in relation to either inertia or momentum matter? So is it from a standing start or f say eccentric? Well, I guess slow. I don't know what that question is related to. Um, how should athletes? So I think some of the stuff around, around sprint based training is that, um, I, I'm pretty sure like we've got to think through this lens, right? If we're looking at sprint-based training and in the future, we're going to have a lot of speed work inside of peak strength. It's going to be in there and it's going to be freaking awesome and I'm excited for it, but it's going to take time. When we're, we're updating some of the speed, actual physical, like the app speed work soon here shortly. But when we're looking at sprint-based work, I think that there needs to be a day of very highly intense speed work. Okay. Like one day where you're doing 30 to 45 minutes of speed work. So that means a dynamic warm up. You're targeting the, the hamstrings, the lower back, the glutes, the gastroc, the, the soleus. You know, we're focusing on that during the warm up. Then we get into some type of technical skips, technical work where we're thinking through how are we going to be applying force into the ground? And I think that when we're thinking about speed strength versus sprinting, if we can just realize that, especially like the first six to seven meters or six to seven strides, when we're sprinting, right? Those first six to seven strides, we are applying 
we have to realize you're you are applying force into the ground. The more you can put into the ground, the more you get back. And if your technique is in a good position, the more you will project forward. Okay. So if you're projecting forward and you're driving hard and you're putting that force into the ground as well as you can, and you're being stable when you're applying that force into the ground, you will now be projected forward from that energy that you're putting into the planet, right? That's how we run fast. So if we can train ourselves by analyzing that technical pattern, especially the first five to seven strides and recognize what force application means and recognize that movements like a single leg squat, a back squat, the reason why they transfer well is because of how much force you're putting into the ground and getting in return. And then as we get into that max velocity, that max speed, the the muscles start to shift from being predominantly hamstring, glute, quad focused, right? To now being gastroc soleus focused. Because now at higher speeds, your hip is doing this rapid action and the force, the energy that's the muscles that's dealing with the massive amount of energy tends to be mostly the soleus. So if we can think through speed in that lens, uh, I think that that takes us to, you've got to train speed, focus work once a week, uh, and you can still develop a ton of strength, especially if we periodize it so that you have like a day of rest before you would get into that leg strength day. This is some stuff. So when, when Nick came home, Singleton, uh, we we actually ended up um just talking about training uh and going over stuff like can you combine powerlifting and olympic weightlifting if so is it better or i would say yeah you can combine that really well i think you can combine that you can combine that uh fantastically so nick and i were talking about like what speed or what speed stuff that he does currently at penn state you know they got a very solid strength program there um that he does different and and some of it is based around they do more conditioning stuff but they also do more speed work earlier in the week and that was one thing he said to me is like i think i think i don't think i would tra- change anything that we're doing here that you guys do here outside of maybe getting that one focused day and i think that 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 could do wonders for kids that aren't as fast that need it and so i think that 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 sort of struck a chord with me um one to do more research on speed work, but then also spend more time in that area, in that realm. That's where, and that's where I'm, I'm planning on going to a point. Um, I knew fast sprinting was spiritual, um, back squat and single leg squat along with other things on leg day are just one of the two I would do. If you're going to do like a big, heavy back squat, if you want to use single leg squats for just like an accessory, you could do like lighter dumbbell, single leg squats. I think that's fine. Um, Big Bergs is asking, how do I make a football plan? Uh, a football workout plan, that's simple. You go to Peak Strength. You 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 download it. You download Peak Strength. You select football. You select your position, and you start the trial. You're going to get seven free days after you start the trial. Then you look at it, and that's when you get into developing that football workout plan, and we're going to hold you guys accountable. You're going to train freaking five days a week, ideally, four to five days a week, and you're going to push yourselves over and over again uh two two more minutes up on the pole um let's say could be possible if he's like david goggins uh that's funny um let me see i thought i saw one other question over here yeah we got two more minutes two more minutes up on the pole and i think just going back over all this stuff is that it it it, the some of the big things to recap is Speed strength to me is impulse. And we've, if we can define just impulse as a amount of force applied in a period of time, uh, that's going to develop that speed strength. But in all reality, um, I'm a catechumen in the Orthodox Church. Is it possible for me to continue? Oh, yeah, for sure. During Lent? Absolutely. I mean, dude, watch Brother Ferris during Ramadan. That dude just s- slaughters it. It's the same t- type of celebration like 
Uh, well, you have fish. You've got olive oil. For sure, you could do it. You're not fully vegan if you're eating fish. Um, I mean, Alex, you could start peak strength for the season right now. And it's going to build you out. You're going to be, if you start peak strength right now, let's say you have football next year. And this is the big thing. Big Bergs, this is for you as well. You get in there and you follow through. You show up at the gym four days a week. Okay, You do day one. You do day two. You do the mobility. You're eating well. You're going to bed. You're resting. You're not making excuses. You're trying to push yourself. You do that for a freaking eight-month time frame. Your bench is going to blow up. Your clean is going to blow up. We just did this reaction to, if you guys are in our Discord channel, so in the Garage Strength Discord channel, we have a freak of the week. Dude, Joey Hodge. Joey Hodge cleaned 325 or something at a 52-inch box jump. Total freak based off of that training. And I think that that's stuff that like we're slowly starting to see is that over time, like, dude, if you guys start now, and you've got goals to be a power five football player or go play D2 or go play D3. Like you got to start and just get it moving and, and, and learn and, and take each day uh, one day at a time to improve, uh, to improve your overall, your overall output. And that's where you know, the, that four for four, think about the four for four. Okay. First week you train four hours for that first week. Then you train four days a week for a month. Okay, then you train four days a week for four weeks, right? That's a month. Then you go four days a week for four months. That's an entire program. Then you do four days a week for a full year, okay? Every every month, four days a week for the full year. Then you do four days a week for four years. That's the four for four system. And if you can just hold yourself accountable to executing that four for four every single week, you will be incredibly more explosive. You will be able to express that impulse, right? And if we can just go back over, impulse is force in time. You're going to be faster. You're going to be more explosive. You're going to be one of the better athletes out there. And then on top of that, you add in one of those sprint days, uh, and now all of a sudden you're an absolute savage. If I'm at the end of wrestling season and the track starts the last week in February, should I switch peak strength to track? Now, that would be fantastic. Bobby Birdland, six months from now, Six months will have passed. Whether you train or not, time will move forward. Yeah, not to get too hokey here, uh, Mr. Beast actually just did a video with these two uh, individuals who they were stuck in a room for 100 days. And one thing I actually used, I brought this up to my son because we like watching those videos, is the one the girl said like, man, I'm going to be stuck in here for 100 days and – the world's going to move on as though nothing happened. The world will continue as though nothing happened to you. You you, you get stuck in a room for 100 days, nobody cares. The world's just going to keep going. And exactly here, what Bobby Birdland just stated, Bobby Birdland, the philosopher, take it from him. If you... Don't train for six months. In six months, the world's not going to care that you didn't train. But if you train for the next six months, in six months, the world's going to know that you have trained for those six months because you're going to be a better version of yourself. And I think that's something that we can all really keep in, in mind. Um, how early should kids start having a pro attitude to their training? I think a positive attitude to the training is most important. I wouldn't go into pro. I think positive. Um Oh man, that stinks, Ernesto. I hope you you recover well, and I hope that you're feeling better. Um, Mr. Beast, you don't know who Mr. Beast is, Keith? Come on. All right, I'm gonna head down to weightlifting. So for peak strength, did the 52 inch? Um, I actually think he did the. This is for CR. I actually think he did the linebacker training. If I or rugby. I think he might have been on the rugby system because he is a rugby player. Uh, so, all right, I'm going to head down. Big Bergs, I'm going to call you out. You're watching Mr. Beast all the time, but you're not training. Come on, dog. Let's go. All right. Thanks for tuning in this week, guys. I am going to head out. Uh, again, if you guys want to join that discussion on on Sunday, on Fridays, geez, on Fridays, um, Yes, CR, that will highly prior, prioritize single leg squat. If you guys want to join, uh, all you guys have to do is click on the actual, if you're on a desktop, just hit the, hit the, what is that? I, 
click the description below to become a channel member if you're not on a desktop or if you're on the desktop click the link in the description join the channel i'll see you guys friday if you're in the private chat until next time you'll see our next video on thursday i hope you love it peace